hope she traveled. And are women who made a difference. A Kula Kids gift to our community. Welcome to a personal interview of Anita Fragel, conducted by Michaela on April 26, 2006. Okay, will you please spell your name and say it? Okay, my name is Anita Fragel, and Anita is A-N-I-T-A, of course, but Fragel is a funny word because it's a German word. F-R-O-E-G-E-L. Okay. And the O-E. Okay, um, I'm just going to ask you a few questions, or actually a lot of questions, about what you did at McLuhan. Okay, okay. so um, what made you decide to work at McLuhan, or was it just like you had to get a job? Well, actually, I started at McLuhan the day after I graduated from high school. So that was in 1955 on June 6th. And I started because a teacher at Aquinas High School, where I went to school, recommended me for the job. I had to know bookkeeping, secretarial skills, etc. So I started as a secretary of McLuhan. McLuhan, as a company, grew and grew and grew. And my job grew and grew and grew as well. And the various jobs I had were bookkeeper, secretary, credit manager, office manager. And then for a short period of time, I was a vice president of, uh, just a vice president. Then I was offered the opportunity by, the, after James McLuhan died, he died in, on February 29th, 1980. It's the leap year day, so it's the only, every four years there's an anniversary of his actual death time. Okay. And JSJ Corporation bought McLuhan. They're a Michigan firm. And I was, I applied for the job of president because I wanted to be a president of the company that I'd worked for for many years before then. And that was in 1981, I was named president of McLuhan. I, I liked the company, I had helped make it grow, and I was very proud to be named the president of McLuhan. Does that answer your question? Oh yeah, you gave me more and than I some. wanted. Yeah. Okay. okay, you can edit. Okay, what would you say that something that you really loved about your job, and can you tell us why? I loved working with the people at McLuhan. The people are always the most important part of any company, and I loved working with the people. I love the creative nature of McLuhan's products, uh -huh. and that type of thing appealed to me as well. Okay. Did you ever think, like, after McLuhan's that you'd find a better job? No, because when I retired from McLuhan, I already had been working for 45 years, and it was time for me not to work anymore. Now I do things that are more uh, appealing on a hobby basis. Okay. Okay, if you had a chance now, what would be one thing that you would change about the company? I had opportunity to make changes all along, so I don't know that there's any one thing that I would change. Uh, it's always little things. When you're growing, you grow a little bit at a time. Maybe you would like to have the growth happen quicker, but you have to plan growth and finance growth. Okay. What is one of the best memories you've had working there and why? I think one of the best memories is being named president of McLuhan Mental Graphics. Okay. Which is now called just McLuhan. Okay. Um, what is one, of, wait, no, okay. Um, how, what do you want people to know you when you're past or gone? Oh, I want people to think that I made a difference in the world and that because I was here, uh, the world might be a better place than it would be if I had not been here. I have always liked making a difference. You gave people many jobs. And I heard that you are, as I was researching, I heard that you gave, like, you introduced flex time. Can you explain what flex time oh. is? The flex time is allowing employees flexibility in their workday schedule. And that was one of the biggest first things that I did in the company. As a working mother, I always had had a problem when I had to take children to the doctor, the dentist, whatever. And so I said to myself, and other companies had been doing it, but not many in La Crosse, uh, I said that if a person works their normal work week and can still uh, have the ability to change their hours to what they need so they can take their children or go to parent-teacher conferences, all those type of things, 
that it isn't going to hurt the company at all, and it certainly will help the employee. They don't have to take sick time, they don't have to take vacation time, because they can reschedule how their work day goes. Okay. Um, why did you want to become the president of this company? Because I think that as a leader you can make more of a difference than you can when you're not the leader of a company, and I think I had the background that because I had worked at the company for quite a few years before I was named president. Uh, in a total work schedule of 45 years, I was president for 19 of those years. So before I became president, I had a big background with the company and knew what I would have liked to have done with the company because I had been there so long and working with so many different things. Okay. Um, would you say that you made McLuhan Metal Graphics what it is today? I would say I worked with the team that made the company what it is today. Without a team, one person can't make a company. You need your people, and your people have to be willing to, to go with what you're recommending, or you have to listen to what they're recommending and make changes so that everyone can help the company grow. I think that I was good for the company at the point in time that I was the leader. Okay. Do you wish you could still be working there, or have you moved on? I think that I don't have the energy I had when I was younger to be able to do what it takes to be the president or the leader of any company. Uh, I think that I still have a fair amount of e energy, but I am now 69 years old. And I think that I would not want to do it because I want the company to have the best they can have. And a younger person at this stage in its life is certainly better. Okay. Can you explain what you really did at McLuhan's, like, um, like what McLuhan really was, like the company itself? Mm -hmm. The company is a nameplate manufacturing company, mostly. Uh, it makes silk screened, it was silk when I first started there, or polyester at this stage of the game, screened images. And it uh, markets to people all over the United States. When I was there, we had about 5,000 active customers every year, and all of the products that were made are custom made. There were no standard products. Each customer got what they asked for. We had an art department which created the layouts for the nameplates and decorative trim and other types of things. Mm -hmm. Nameplates are both metal and they're the labels, the stickers that you might see today. Uh, so, does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, do you regret ever being any part of be, like McLuhan's? No. No, I am proud to have been at McLuhan's okay. in the many different positions that I held. Okay. Do you notice what an impact you had on this community right away, or did, did it take you a while? Uh, because I was one of the first female leaders of a fair-sized company, I noticed that my impact as a female leader was probably more than if it had, if I had not been female. Is that the type of thing you were looking for, or me personally, or both? I guess both, because when you're a female, you have to work really hard to get ahead. Uh, I think it's easier for males to get ahead because people expect males to be leaders and females have to put out a lot of extra effort to get noticed in the world. Okay, okay um, is there anyone that had a problem of what you were doing to McLuhan? Not that I can remember. I think that if you talk to the employees who are there today that were there when I was there that they would agree that I was a good leader. Okay. Um, how is I it hope they would agree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how has this impacted your life? It's made me a satisfied, contented retiree. Uh, besides being, I was a single mother for most, well, all of my presidency almost. So I had four kids I was still raising at that point in time. My oldest son, when I, uh, when I became president, was 18 years old, just graduating from high school. My youngest son was nine years old, so 
I, uh, I had quite a challenge as being president, a new president, at the same time that I was still raising four kids. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to take a break right now so we can save our things. And Okay. Okay, um, is there any stories you would like to tell about McLoon? Oh, we were involved in the flood of 1965. That was a very stressful time. Uh, when the flood of 1965, which is long before you were born, <laughs> occurred, water actually got to the top of our desks. Wow. And we had to run the company from my home at the time, and I had a little baby at the time, a two-year-old. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, an unusual story. We have pictures of the flood at the company. I still say we because I was there so long. I think mm -hmm. of it as we. And we had a, uh, uh, pictures there. I don't have any p pictures personally. And I, it really upset me when the Ten Commandment thing was uh, being talked about down at the park. Mm -hmm. you know? Because the youngsters who helped fill sandbags to help save our business, which did get water anyway, uh, worked really, really hard. These were young, ch young, mostly boys, some girls, who filled sandbags without expecting anything in return. So it, it bothers me a lot that when the memorial, which, is, which was the Ten Commandments to them, and I know that you're not supposed to talk about religion in school, but it's part of the story. Mm -hmm. And if that's a memorial to the efforts that these, these youngsters did during a time of an emergency, to me that was important. So that's why it upset me when they made a great big thing about that offends somebody for being just there. It's a memorial. Okay. Um, where was everything taking place at this time? Can you tell us where McLoon's is? McLoon's is off the causeway on Causeway Boulevard. And when uh, the flood occurred, it's at the end of Sumner Street. Our, the address was actually something like 85 Sumner Street. But people can find it easier by saying Causeway Boulevard and Sumner Street. If you know where the quick trip is on the causeway, it's behind that area. Okay. And they now own quite a bit of property. When we first were there, when I was, that was just in the, the mid-50s, we had a small building that wasn't any bigger than this room wow. with three offices in it and a restroom. <laughs> so everything that happened from 55 forward happened after I was hired. Okay. Um, when did you no, like notice that everything started being affected like from what you did? I suppose it was very gradual because I learned from James McLuhan first and then when I became president I learned from Martin Johnson who was my boss over from the JSJ company in Michigan. And I learned everything on a gradual basis and as you're learning you're making a difference as you go. So I noticed it then, and the fact that after I was president, the company was profitable. You learn when you make profits. Uh, you learn when you're recognized for various things in the community, and I gave you a bag or biographical uh, background on me. I have received quite a few awards for various things. One that I'm most proud of is the Pope John the Twenty Third Award from uh, Viterbo University. And I was president of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I see Jean Gitz's name was out front. She was interviewed yep. earlier. But she was an earlier president, and I always respected oh. Jean Gitz and, and Jean Bassett now. Um, oh. But I, I always respected her work. Um, is that enough? Yeah. I, I could um, keep going. Oh, OK. Um. <laughs> Can you tell us a little who um, James McLoon is? James McLoon was the son of a doctor, and that doctor was the doctor who helped my mother when I was born in 1937. His father was killed in the early 40s, and so James McLoon started a small business. Originally, it was James McLoon Advertising Company, 
Advertising Service Incorporated. And when you had to say that in, when you're answering the phone, it's a lot of words. So then it was shortened to James McLuhan <laughs> Advertising, and, it, and then it went down from there to McLuhan Metal Graphics eventually. Uh, the metal graphics part came after I was hired. It, an advertising specialty company sells the things that are printed and you hand out to customers and things. Well, that business was very seasonal because you give most of those presents at the Christmas time. And so he decided to get into screen printing, and that was in the end of 1955, I believe. And that's when he moved to another location and set up a manufacturing plant. Okay. Um can you explain to us, like, when, like, can you give us the dates, like, all this started happening? Like, from when you, the company first started till when you retired? That you'll probably be able to see easier on my biography. Okay. And the reason I refer you to there is because if I gave you a blow-by-blow -blow discussion about my 45 years of work, we'd be here for a day and a half. And I don't remember the specific days of all of these things. It, it, some of the highlights of the years were, for me personally, when I became president, when I was hired in June of 55, when I became president in September of 1981, and then when I retired in November of 2000. I don't know. It, okay. Um, would you say there was any, like, stealing of ideas or, um, like, was there anybody that tried to steal, like, McLuhan's ideas? Not that I want to talk about. Oh. <coughs> That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, in, in school, did you ever have any other plans? Did you think you were going to work at that company, or did you want to do something else? Actually, my bookkeeping teacher recommended me for that com for that job because... At the time, I couldn't afford to go to college, and she thought that that would be a good job because I had very good skills. And because I was in the upper 10% of my class, she knew I could succeed at that job. And I proved her right. Okay. Could you tell us, like, how you guys got your ideas at McLuhan's, like, your ideas to make, like, the different little stickers or anything? Well, because people need identification on the products that they have. We started with things like uh, the automobile back nameplates that say this was sold by Dahl Motor, that type of thing. That was one of our early products. And because screen printing is a very versatile form of printing and very permanent because they originally used enamel paints and now they're into all kinds of different kinds of paints. But uh, those products kind of were just what was needed, and so we, we filled a need in the marketplace. And that's what most products actually are, is someone needs something so somebody figures out how to fill that need. And we started doing a lot of things by direct mail, and that means you mail companies that might need those products. And we enclosed samples in the direct mail showing what are the products that we were currently making and can you use something like this, you know? So in, in designing products, you have to be able to make it, you have to be able to market it, and you have to be able to uh, sell it profitably or you can't keep making it. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Would you say there are, company, are there companies now that call you or send you emails or anything that say they need your products? Because I'm retired. I've been retired five years. I'm out of the flow of the business at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there still are companies that are calling McLuhan and asking for help. And McLuhan was a problem solver for customers. If they have a unique product they need, we would figure out how can we make it work and have a durable product that the customer could use. So I'm sure it's still happening. Okay. Um and oh. People couldn't work for a while, but then everybody that could work and come in and help bail out the water and clean up the stuff. We were running the office more or less from my house, 
first day we went back to work, because we had to get some files, they had moved all the files to the second floor uh, in the, did you want me to wait till? No, I'm that's recording, okay. you okay. can just cut it. Okay. We had to t get the files from the upper floor because I was picking up the mail at the post office, taking it to my house, opening it up, seeing what customers wanted. The phone was routed to my house. Now, I had a single phone line, not a oh. business phone line, and a little kid. And there were other people working in my house with me in <laughs> my dining room. Be, about how many people? Well, c because it was a little house, not very many, about four or five. Some were working from their homes doing other things. And we were trying to keep the business going. And the first day we went back to work, we had to be rowboated into the company, go up a ladder on the roof, go down through the roof, you know, to get to the files that were upstairs. So it was unusual. <laughs> but it was exciting at the same time because we were still able to keep running the company, even though there was a flood that had taken all of the lower level and had three feet of water in it. All the typewriters were ruined, all of them, you know, because oh, you could. Were you like stressed when this happened? Like, or were, was it, was how it did you feel when like the flood started happening and you knew that you would have to like move everything to your own home? I guess I just did it because it had to be done. You know, you get to a point, it's like when you're having a baby, you have to do it because you got to do it. <laughs> And uh, it's just an exciting period in time, but it also was very important that our customers not be affected any more than they were by the fact that we were late on deliveries because we had to get all the equipment dried out. Now, I wasn't in charge of that at the time. I was in charge of the office and keeping the office people, who were mainly women, um, busy doing the quoting of the jobs, our, our quoting was much simpler then than it became later when our products became more complicated. Okay. Yeah. Um, would you say, how many people would, would you say that worked at McCoom when you retired? I'd say 175 maybe. Wow, did you get to hire and fire people? <laughs> <laughs> of course, through the years I got to hire and fire people. One unusual thing about the people in McLuhan is quite a few of our creative people and our high-level managers were left-handed. I'm left-handed. I didn't hire them because they're left-handed. In fact, many of them were hired by James McLuhan. But it's just unusual that people in creative jobs often are left-handed. Okay. So. Did, yeah, you have, no. did you have to go through all these people's files to make sure they were okay, like if they did any crimes that they couldn't be hired? Not as much then as people do now, because I think that the world has changed and there's more risk in hiring now uh, okay. than there was then. I think that we would interview and look for people's skills, their people's skills, can they communicate? You're communicating very well today, by the way. Thank you. And so you'd make a good applicant for a job. Okay. She can talk. Uh, of course Thanks. she can. That's a good thing. Um. Well. Oh no, I forgot my question. Um, Sorry. That's okay. Um, was there anybody that really had an effect on all your decisions? Like, did somebody say, no, you can't do this, or no, you can't do that, while you were, like, office manager besides Jim McLoon? Anybody? No, Jim McLoon was my direct boss. Uh -huh. And so if I had an idea that he didn't like, it probably wouldn't have gone anyplace. Later on, Martin Johnson was my direct boss, even though I was president at that point in time. Okay, um, would you, like, um, or, like, did you have any effects on what you did or what you achieved? Like, would you say while you were working, did you have anybody have a problem with what you were doing? Like, did anybody not really like you for any reasons? They didn't tell me if they didn't like me. Oh, did, was it? So I, it wasn't obvious if they didn't like me. Oh, okay. I, I like to get along well with people, so... I don't think that I raise a lot of controversy. I try to manage by consensus where if I wanted something, I would listen to other people's opinions mm -hmm. and then take all of those opinions and boil it down into what we would end up doing. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, 
do you think your kids had any effect on like how long you worked or like what were your hours or no I think that my kids would have rather have had me home more because when you're president you have to put in long hours mm -hmm. I think that it would my kids would have preferred that I did have uh, a good babysitter when I had my last one and that was before of course uh, I was president but my nine-year-old uh, probably w that was my fourth baby uh, probably would have benefited from me being home I think you you have a heart but I had to be a wage earner my husband didn't make much money and he died the year that I became president so I've been a w I was a widow uh, from the time I became president till now. So I did a good share of the raising of the kids on my own. Oh, wow. I felt like a piece of pie. This is, this is a personal aside. I felt like a piece of pie, like a pizza. And there was never anything left for me because I was so busy all the time. Okay. So, okay. But you, we, we, we can handle that if we become tough and if we want to. Uh, you do have to be fairly tough to be a leader. You can't, be, you can't break down into tears because somebody did something you didn't like. You mm -hmm. can't do that. And in fact, the few women that came in my office and cried didn't impress me much because they weren't doing what they needed to grow up and be a, an effective worker. They so needed to be a leader like they, you. They needed to be tougher. I mean, in any work site, you're going to have some problems occur, and you have to say, yeah, it doesn't matter that that person didn't like me. It doesn't matter that they talked about me and I overheard it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that type of thing, you have to be tough enough to take what take the world it. hands to you. Mm -hmm. It's like when you have brothers and sisters. I mean, I can yeah. see your eyes. I can see you. You know what it's like. You have to you have to work in a company similar to working in a family, and you have to get along. Like they say, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger? Yes, and you can become strong. It's good to be strong because you have confidence. If I could give confidence to everybody in the world, I'd like to do that because too many people don't have confidence that they can do something. And I think that you can do anything if you prepare for it, and then you really get down there and work for it. I mean, I just have a belief in that. I think that's part of my background, my upbringing. I was the oldest daughter in my mother's fam mother and dad's family. How many siblings did you have? I only had one brother, one sister. And uh, I think being the oldest, you have more put on you early on. Sure. And you learn how to do stuff you have to do just to live. I mean, when my mother couldn't iron my blouses, and back then everything needed ironing, uh, I had to learn to iron them myself when I was probably a, a freshman in high school or eighth grade. I mean, those type of things can be learned. Okay. Never was a very good cook then, though. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask you a few more questions about McLoon. Um, yes. Would you say, like, did you ever have any crimes that were committed there? Like, did anybody ever call and say bomb threats, or did you have any fires? Oh, we had a security system at McLoon because we had products that were very expensive. I mean, the, the aluminum, the raw materials were very expensive. And once I got a police call that the alarm had gone off, and I, in the middle of the night, went out to the company. Police were there. We got in. And from the ceiling, we had had a, a, what you call those things on the roof, skylights. Somebody had unscrewed the skylight and there was a rope hanging there and the burglar tools were on the roof. They didn't catch him because when the alarm went off, he heard it. He got but, out of there? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. But the guy was coming in, he, out of the roof, you couldn't take aluminum anyway. Yeah. Anything yeah, heavy. And we didn't have cash at the company, I know, because you have checks, you deposit them, you don't have cash. Okay. Were there that was interesting though. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. I'd be like, what? Well, not fun. Yeah, it was scary yeah. because you never expect to see a roof. <laughs> wow. A roof coming out. Yeah. Especially a skylight. You'd think a it'd skylight. break or something. Well, it was plastic. Oh, But, plastic. I mean, they had to unscrew a lot of screws. They had to use lots. It took them quite a while. They had to make sure they wouldn't fall. 
<coughs> okay, well, we're going to take Well, he was going to use the rope to go down. Okay, we're going to take one more break. Taking up all kinds of extra things. Do you want to hear about any of that? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, because in retirement, you're supposed to enjoy yourself. Well, I've started taking watercolor painting, which is really, wow. if you have art. I never had art in high school because uh, there were so many classes I didn't have time for art. I've taken up drawing. I make the greeting cards like I showed you. Do a lot of reading. And I just bought a Canon PowerShot camera, and I'm wanting to use that now. Wow. And, so, I and I have, of course, a computer cards. with email and all the things like that. I travel with my sisters, or with my sister, and uh, we go to different states every year. And okay. do you ever go to the library downtown? I've never been to the library downtown. Well, go in May because one piece of my art is going to be hanging there. There's an art show for okay. all of the amateur artists. Yeah. And one piece of art is going to be hanging there. Okay. So, anyway, that's what I just thought I'd throw in. Because in retirement, you have to work towards something. Yeah. <laughs> There's the water, I thank you. <coughs> uh, are we done then? Do you have to quit, or what are you doing? No, we, could, uh, we can go as long as we want. That okay. was just the bell for the other classes. Okay. When you're, when you're, did your siblings ever want to be a part of the company that Actu you were part of? Actually, my sister worked for McClune, and she retired before I did, even though she was younger. She worked in the factory, and uh, she liked doing what she was doing. She was numbering nameplates. They are machines. They're uh, like a stamping machine. And she did work there. My brother runs lacrosse glass, the building down on Third oh, Street with the beautiful yeah. glass front. So That's because nice. he runs a glass company, and he worked at a glass company when I was president, so he has his own company. Oh, that's oh. nice. Yes. Okay. Um, any more questions? No? Okay. Well, thank you, Anita, for having us talk to you, and thank you for coming. Thank you, Michaela and Heather, Heather for and interviewing Allison. me and Allison. You've done a nice job of interviewing, and now you girls just study really hard and become leaders in the world. Okay. And uh, that's a good thing. Uh, you have to give up something to become a leader, but be a leader anyway. I have a question. Okay. Did any men get mad because you were the president? They didn't tell me if they did. I had a good working I, I had a good working relationship with the men in the company and because I've dealt with different people all my life, I've never had a controversial kind of a background. And I think people accepted me because they knew I knew a lot about the company and about what I was doing. I've also I, I, I've been president of Rotary, uh, which is a big downtown club. Oh, yeah. And La Crosse Rotary. Rotary Company, uh, or <laughs> La Crosse Rotary Club. Yeah. yeah. And I've done a lot of things that, that uh, early on were unusual for women to be doing. I was the head of the United Way, uh, a chairperson of the leading of the campaign one wow, year. Wow, that's like all over the world. No, here oh, in La Crosse. Oh, yeah.